Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Duo Group Iron Man. Last video, I spent the whole time runecrafting and I got one runecraft level. And I also got 200,000 wrath runes, which has a GE value of 53.4 mil. And I know exactly what you're wondering. Why the frick, Kip, did I craft this many wrath runes? There's no way I'm ever gonna go through this many over the course of probably both of our accounts. We'll never go through this many. So why did I craft 200,000 of them? Because it was fun, and I thought it would make a cool title and thumbnail. For this video though, I don't exactly have plans on what I want to do. I might just do some skill hopping, and maybe I'll figure something out that way. And in between everything else, I still do want to continue doing TOB to try and get, like, any drop. I mean, preferably a Vernic, but any drop would be really nice to get. I'm at 114 KC, so a little bit unlucky, but I guess the RNG is kind of bouncing out from chambers too because I got a little bit extra lucky in the 66 KC I did here. There's this person I've seen for a while today splashing on the cows at the crafting guild, and uh, uh here, just just look. I've, I've never seen anything like that before. <laughs> Hey, gotta make those gains somehow though. Those post-99 ranks, am I right? I kind of feel like training some agility, so I'm gonna go train some agility. I'm at uh, 93 and kind of the overarching goal for now, I don't know if you want to call it like a short-term or medium-term goal, is to max. So of course Sepulchre will be a good way to work towards max because it's the best agility XP in the game and we don't have the Ring of Endurance yet. I do have the Squirrel, so it'd be nice to get Dark Acorn eventually too. For the recolor. Maxing is not the end goal of the account by the way if that wasn't clear, it's just a milestone along the way. Along the way of enjoying the journey and having a lot of fun playing the game. <gasps> no way! 25 for the Ring of Endurance! Bruh. That's one out of 200 from the Grand Coffin. There's no way, dude. Look at that value, 37.6 mil. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> that was the last thing I was expecting. I'm so glad to have that though. Okay, so what does the Ring of Endurance do? You can charge it up with stamina potions, so I'll use a dose on it, just add one dose. And now what happens when I have this equipped, if I drink a dose of stamina potion, it's gonna remove one charge from here and remove the sip that I drink and essentially give me the effects of two doses. Drinking a sip will now restore my run by 40% and give me twice the amount of time of stamina boost. So four minutes instead of two minutes. You are overall still using two doses of stamina potion, so it doesn't technically save stamina potion. However, I do have to have this ring equipped the whole time so I couldn't have my brimstone ring or any other ring equipped because if I remove it then it halves the amount of uh, stamina time you have remaining. Here I'll just drink a dose right now so you can see I'm going to drink a sip. You can see I have four minutes. The ring took the charge out and now when I remove it you'll see. Okay I feel like that might have been a bug because it ran out of charges so let's say I drink a sip and there is still charges remaining on the ring and now when I unequip it. Okay that's really weird. Okay wow huh. So I guess if you have one charge left on the ring and you use up that last charge, you can still unequip the ring and keep the four minutes. Hey, so uh, I guess you could say today's video is sponsored by me because I recently got this join button on YouTube, which is a way for you to monetarily support me. There's no obligation and you can cancel after one month if that's all you wanna do. And one month of channel membership is basically the equivalent to if you had watched every single one of my videos with Adblock off. And besides just the benefit of knowing you're directly supporting me, you also get this sick badge of a mudkip in great pain that'll show up next to your name in the comments. And you can use these mudkip emotes in comments too. And the more people that join, the more emotes we can eventually unlock and I have a lot of emotes saved up ready to go. Either way though, you watching the videos is all I could really ever ask for, so thank you so much for continuing to watch, which allows me to do what I love full time, and now let's get back to Sepulcher. There is another passive effect that the ring gives when you have it equipped. If it has at least 500 charges, then it reduces your run energy drain by 15%, and which doesn't use up any of the stamina charges. Now where would you use the Ring of Endurance for? Pretty much a lot of places that you would just normally use stamina potions, so like Herbivore, more, blast furnace, there's that underwater agility thieving method where you could use the ring for. Uh, maybe for learning solo raids, it's not efficient to use, but you could save an inventory spot or two with the ring. Maybe God Wars if you're ranging Sarah or Bandos. Tithe Farm, Giant Mole, 
uh, multiple different kinds of runecrafting training, whether it's Orania or Astral runecrafting or other types too probably. It boils down really to two uses, saving inventory space by making you only need half the amount of stamina potions and saving time. For example, at Blast Furnace, you only have to take out and drink a stamina dose half as often. I will say though, Sarah might be kind of an exception with using the ring because, I mean, first off, you won't be able to use a better ring if you're using the Ring of Endurance. And then also because you generally don't need four minutes per kill. Two minutes is usually even more than enough time. And then that 90 second downtime between when Sarah is spawning is just wasted time since you're just standing around. But yes, I'm very glad to have this ring, especially before maxing, because it is going to help with the maxing grind eventually when I go back to Blast Furnace and Herbivore. Those are the two places I'm like really thinking about and excited to use the ring for. Whoa, 17 hours away from the game. That's the longest I've ever been away from RuneScape my whole life. <laughs> Me and Spook went to a concert last night and uh, I got a couple clips, so here you go. <laughs> Here's nachos that you can't even see. And there's quesadillas that you can't even see. Yeah, so anyways, I can't believe I got the Ring of Endurance yesterday and... I don't know what to do. Maybe I'll at least go for one more level here at Sepulcher, just because I'm so close to it already. Uh, I have Trident. I don't know if it actually hits though on the purple. <laughs> <laughs> It should eventually maybe equip like a different top. Uh, oh yeah, I'll just unequip. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there you okay, go. yeah. Okay, cool. I just have to like <laughs> unequip torso. Yeah, yeah. The torso is like negative forty mage attack or something, so it splashes. Puff, do you want some souls for Nilo? I got you. <laughs> this goaded Iron Man in the full Torva is in fact an Iron Man. <laughs> Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Luke? Oh god. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait, what? Did, did you misclick on the door? <laughs> yes, I went to grab my food. Uh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> you pulled a Bodhi. Wait a sec, I missed it. I I got 94 agility probably like one or two floors ago, but yeah, 94, and I get another. No. Was that PB? That one? Yeah, 710. Nice. That felt really fast. I've been having a lot of fun with Sepulchre so far, and I've been here for quite a bit already. Uh, I mean, just today, I've been here for, what's that, over six hours, still averaging 70k XP per hour. Um, point being, though, is that we're just going to make Sepulchre be like the theme slash the goal of this video. Um, with the goal specifically to be greening out the log, which the only thing I still need is the Dark Acorn, which is 3,000 hollowed marks. I think I'm at like almost 1k or around 1k marks in total, so I have 2k more to go. And the only coffins I loot is just this last coffin right here and then the Grand Coffin, which I think should average 14 marks per run, which is pretty slow, but you kind of lose out on a lot of agility XP if you're searching all the coffins on like floor four and five or even three too. Um, plus you might not even get the grand coffin completions if you're not super good at sepulcher like me. Um, this right here is run number 64. So I've already done like 40 runs since starting this video. I do like probably six runs per hour. I just realized I probably shouldn't be searching this coffin on the final floor if I am gonna be picking any of them because all the coffins on each of the floors give the same amount of uh, hollowed marks. So if I am gonna pick one to search, I may as well pick one that doesn't actually require any upkeep. So I probably should use the one with like the grapple on the crossbow. So no more building bridges for me. I guess you could say I burned that bridge. Did I drop my Dorish and crossbow? That doesn't matter. Let's use a rune crossbow. Oh, never mind. There's one in the group storage. By the way, that burning the bridge joke just made absolutely no sense. I just, yeah, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Wait, what if with all this extra time, I brought those construction supplies with me so I could still loot that coffin at the end if I do have extra time? I had to skip looting the coffins this run because I knew this would be a PB 645. <laughs> Oh. Crazy milestone here. We have 100 searches of the Grand Coffin. Gosh, I'm 
always so unlucky. Except for when I got to meet Spook Dog, of course. Oh man, I've been waiting all day for this level. We have 95 agility. Now when I have downtime or when I want to make downtime for myself to do other stuff or just to chill for a bit or maybe to let my wrist rest, let my wrist rest for a bit, uh, I'm just gonna do some arty rooftops because I guess this is kind of becoming the agility video, so. Can't hurt to have more marks. As you can see though, I was getting like 70k XP per hour doing Sepulcher, and uh, I feel really bad because I haven't done any birdhouse runs, I haven't done any farming runs. I've just really liked seeing the loot pile up in the inventory and also just being in the flow of just jumping right back into Sepulcher is really nice and I've really been enjoying it so I don't want to get too distracted. There will be plenty more time for farm runs and birdhouses after I'm done with Sepulcher. Probably could say that about like literally any activity in the game, but I, I swear I, I I normally keep on top of them. Just just give me a couple days, okay? I'll be back to it. Ooh, it looks like Spook's doing Sepulchre too. Um, I wasn't sure exactly what she was up to, but that's interesting that we're doing the same activity, and I don't think she knows that I've been doing agility slash Sepulchre. So how funny would it be if I just like randomly surprised her one day by getting 99 agility? I think her like one and only goal for now is just to beat me to 99 agility, but she also doesn't know I'm doing it or know that I'm like racing which I'm, I'm not but i kind of am i don't know it'd just be funny though bro i was also just looking at the stats page here and i noticed some stuff was like moved over and i realized the reason why is because they have these two things right here uh which i'm sure has been long out uh, by the time you're seeing this video but in real time it's coming out in two days oh my god i saw in our group chat that spook got a ring and for a second i thought she got the ring of endurance but then i realized that it's not that ring that she got, it's the other one. <laughs> the main reason I'm not doing this on the same world as her is because the obstacles don't start until someone enters that floor. It's kind of hard to explain, but like, if you have multiple people on the same world and there's already someone on the floor that you enter, then the obstacles won't be at their default starting points. Which doesn't matter for people learning Sepulchre, but if you've been doing this for a while, you get a feel for the exact timing and clicking for every layout based on the start point of all the obstacles on each floor. So if there's other people doing Sepulchre on the same world as you, then it tends to mess things up. So what I would propose would be either an option for individual instant Sepulchre, or at the very least, a peek or a check option to see if there is anyone else on your world inside Sepulcher. <laughs> Dude, I oh my god, that <laughs> oh, another day, another agility level 96. Yeah, cool. Oh, 2150 till cool. Getting very close to getting that acorn unlock though. Less than 300 more marks to go, so probably like three more hours, three to four hours. You know what the great part is about being on a mostly non-degenerate North American sleeping schedule? Is that when there's major updates coming into the game, like Tombs of a Masket, the update happens right after I go to sleep, and then by the time I wake up, the rollbacks already happen, and I don't lose any progress. So with that, good night. Tombs of a Masket is coming out in the morning. Okay, sorry, that was like extra toxic of me to say last night, but look at the login screen, it looks so cool. I'm probably not gonna be doing any Rage 3 for maybe at least a couple of weeks or until there's some like decent guides out on it. I've never really exactly been the kind of player to just like rush out all the new content and be the first one to get a video out on it, especially when it comes to new PVM stuff. It kind of makes me a little bit like anxious thinking about it, so I'm just not going to worry about it. I mean, clearly, since the videos are like a month behind or something, you already know by this point that I didn't make a video on it on day of release, so. Just uh, going to finish off the 3k hollowed marks and we'll green out that sepulcher log. There is one thing I did want to show you though on the update here, which is nothing to do with TOA, but if we go all the way down to the other news section or other changes section. When I was going for the Scepter and 99 Thieving, I showed that the Pharaoh Scepter was kind of glitched when you would use it to teleport to the mummy. You could still get teleported out, so they, they fixed that. It's probably nothing to do with my videos, but I like to at least pretend like I had a part in that. And this is finally the last coffin I'm going to have to search because as you can see, I'm now over 3,000 hollowed mod marks, so we can go ahead and buy the acorn. And see, it's 181 openings now, so I'm kind of more closer to being on rate. So I put in the time and the effort, so I'd say at this point I kind of do deserve that one ring of endurance. So let's trade the mysterious stranger, dark acorn, 3,000, yes, 
And there it is. Let's check the uh, the log. Hollowed Sepulchre is now green in the collection log. That's so nice. I don't know if I'll come back here. When I do eventually go for 99 agility, I'm probably just gonna end up doing an arty course and doing like farm runs and birdhouse runs in between or something. So, might be my last time at Sepulchre. There's the scoreboard just for uh, my own future reference, I guess, or if you wanna see what my best times were and my number of completions. I never knew there's a death counter here. It's probably not too many people have died here, I'd imagine. <laughs> I did not reset the loot tracker before this video for Sepulchre, and it also combines all the coffins. It, there's not like a separate coffin for each floor. This is just every single one. So unfortunately, this isn't exactly very representative of what I got in this video. But I haven't had an empty inventory for like four days because all the items that do stack up uh, from Sepulchre, I have just left them in my inventory. I think like after the first night I banked my stuff, but for the last like three days, this is all the stuff I've accumulated. So we can do a little price check here of all the stackable items. This isn't everything, of course, like Sanfu serums or the Rune 2Hs or uh, the Rune plate bodies, but um, oh, look, those Ranar seeds, that's gonna be so nice, dude. 15.7 mil worth, plus the Ring of Endurance. I mean, that's kind of the main thing. Uh, these Runite bolts, I think, will be really nice for when I get Onyx bolt tips from just like random various activities because I can attach them onto here, enchant them, and then alk them for like 9k each. In this video, I gained 2.1 mil agility XP, and if you also take into account the time I spent at the RD course, overall I'd say I averaged like 60k XP per hour, which means that was about 35 hours of agility this video. Let's go find my squirrel. Okay, let's use Dark Acorn on the giant squ- oh, wait. Okay, use Dark Acorn on the giant squirrel. Yeah, and now there's a metamorphosis for it and you could switch it back and forth anytime. Oh, that's so cool, dude. Yo, I love him. I think the Dark Squirrel is actually my favorite pet out of the ones I have. Um, I haven't even thought about it before, but like, especially after seeing the recolor, he's so cool. Uh, don't, don't tell the other pets though. I don't pets my bank so he can't hear anyways. So in this video, we got the Ring of Endurance, we greened out the log by getting the Dark Acorn for the squirrel, and we reached 2150 total level. Pretty solid progress, if I do say so myself. <clears throat> With that said, make sure to check out my Duo Teammate Spook Dogs channel, which you can find a link to in every video description. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that you have a great day, and I will see you again next time. Just a reminder, by the way, channel memberships, you know you want him.